Here's a quick introduction to Paint and Stick. You can find the effect at Effect, AE Scripts and AE Plugins, Paint and Stick. I'm applying it to a solid. By default, Paint on Transparent is on. However, you can also shut that off. The first thing it's going to ask you is to choose a frame location if you attempt to draw, um, if you haven't already drawn. Um, so this is just the permanent location of your frames. Put it somewhere safe where these frames aren't going to get deleted. The frames are not stored with the project. Uh, so then we have our different uh, buttons here. We have Paint, which is pretty obvious. That just paints. Then we have Matte, which is kind of cool. Let me shut that off for a second. And this is going to show through a solid. So if you have Paint on Transparent off, you can actually see through the layer. And then we have Erase. Uh, you know, the buttons for these, Paint, Erase, and Matte, are all up here. They're also here. Erase is going to erase matte strokes and paint strokes. So if I do that... Um, once it settles, it's uh, going to undo your paintwork. This is the glue stick right here. Uh, this is going to glue if you're using that feature, but we're not right now. Let me turn that back on for a second. This is the erase stick brush. This is the clear frame. Just so you know, we're drawing the keyframes down here, and every time you make a new drawing, this is going to draw a, uh, a new keyframe. Uh, so if I want to, I can click this. This can make a clear keyframe, and if I'm on a frame that already has a drawing, this will clear it. This button right here is going to delete all the keyframes, so that just gets rid of all your paint. This right here is going to erase all the stuck paint. This is refresh. This will uh, show any changes to your brushes, and also if there are any weird uh, visual artifacts or caching issues, which can happen in After Effects, just click this and it will sort them out. This is your onion skin toggle, and this is your uh, fast draw toggle, uh, which we'll go over in a bit. So here you have your brush settings, color, opacity, flow, etc. Uh, very similar to uh, Photoshop and After Effects. I'm not going to get into those. I get into those in a little more detail on the website. Uh, go check it out. Then we have brush size. I just want to show you the hotkey. Uh, I'm on Windows right now. I'm going to hold down Control, click and drag, and that's going to change the brush size. Um, on Mac, it's Command, click and drag. So you Control, click and drag, and then if you release the Control or the Command key, um, and then you continue to click and drag, that's going to change the brush hardness. That's the uh, same hotkey as After Effects, by the way. You have your brush dynamics tag right here. So this is for pressure sensitivity. Right now it's set to size. You can see I'm pushing lightly and then hard. So you got your dynamics. I'll clear that. You can also set flow, which is really just your opacity uh, to pressure. Uh, so now I want to create a custom brush. Let's say, for example, I want to take a comp uh, in my layer and I want to make that into a brush. So I'm going to hold down control, click and drag, again, command on Mac, a little larger there. And then to capture a brush, hold down control, option, shift, command, option, shift on Mac, and then click. Uh, now take a look in your brushes window. That brush is here, and uh, it's feathered because of my hardness. Let me just uh, turn that hardness off. So uh, this is going to default to the brush color because the uh, tint is set to 100%. If you want it to look exactly like how you captured it, just set this tint back down to zero. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff you can do with tint modes, um, but anyway, there's your brush. If you want to delete it, just click this red X. Um, so that was created in the project so it can be deleted uh, on the fly, but uh, all of these were loaded in the advanced section through the universal brush folder, so these have to be deleted on disk where you source them from. Let's say, for example, you want to do a screen capture. Uh, let's say instead of you know trying to make a uh, brush out of the stencil thing, you just want to place it really precisely uh, maybe you want to get in there and just make sure it's exactly where you want it. Uh, well, you can screen capture straight to frame paint. You just want to solo this layer that you're looking at and then have paint and stick selected and hold down shift. See how it says capture screen as paint? Then you click. And now just for example's sake, I'm going to actually delete this layer. And now you see that um, this stencil that we just captured is uh, part of the paint, which means that you can draw on it and you can erase it. And eventually, if you choose to, you can glue it. But we're not going to do that here. Check out the gluing tutorials on the website. There are two paint modes, Fast Preview and Full Render. Uh, just to show really quickly, I'm going to put a uh, blur on here. I'll put a little fast blur on here. It's actually a pretty heavy blur. Okay, so see how much that's blurring all my paint? So Fast Preview is going to ignore all of my effects. Oh, let me uh, use my paintbrush here. It's going to ignore all the effects and just let me draw really quickly over the UI so you don't get bogged down. Full render is going to try to draw and update in real time so it can get a little sluggish. 
These both have their advantages and their disadvantages. You can always toggle on and off to see what's best for what. Now let's take a look at path smoothing. So path smoothing is going to smooth out your lines and make it a little bit easier to draw nice arcs, uh, but it has another great use too. If I'm zoomed way out, for example, sake, I'm at like 12.5%, I'm going to attempt to draw something, and you're going to notice it's going to look really jagged. Um, and that's because, you know, we're not getting access to all the pixels when we're out here, so we don't know exactly where the mouse is positioned. However, let's turn on pad smoothing, and I'm going to crank that up a little bit. Now I'm going to try to draw. And it's going to do a much better job at smoothing that out uh, versus that. Uh, so always paint at 100% scale. Uh, so you can be pixel accurate, but this is here to help otherwise. Also, just to point out, if you're trying to do uh, nice sweeping curves here, it's a little bit harder to do without path smoothing, but if you turn that on, you can see that uh, it smooths your lines really nicely. Uh, here's a good example. If you see this, this was a little bit ugly, uh, but this is smoothed out pretty well. Keep in mind there's going to be a slight delay when you're using path smoothing because first it has to see where your brush is going, then it has to smooth it, and only then can it render. After that, we have our advanced settings for sticking. Uh, you can check out more on those at aescripts.com slash paint and stick. Uh, there are tutorials on how to stick and what all of these settings do.